field record. Yes, now this lady likes me. <laughs> Hello. Okay, good morning once again, everyone. So let me go back a bit and revise that part so that we are all on the same page. So we are looking at the kingdom planting and we saw that there were five different classes within or uh, five different categories within kingdom planting, thallophyta, bryophyta, pteridophyta, gymnosperm and angiosperm. Out of this, we had started looking at the thallophyta category where it specifically talks about the organization of the thallus that is undifferentiated stem, root and leaf like structure. That's what was called as thallophyta. And two examples that I asked you to remember was the uh, green, red, brown algae and his pyrogyre. So that was thallophyta. Now the next uh, type or category within the kingdom planty is bryophyta. Now the specific characteristics of the bryophyta is again from low, less complexity to higher complexity. So bryophyta, they do not have vascular tissue. That means they do not have xylem and phloem tissue, right? So the plant body has root-like, stem-like, and leaf-like structure. Also read this word carefully. It is not saying it has root, stem, and leaf. These are the structures which resembles to root, stem, and leaf. Like uh, the common examples uh, which are shown here in the pictures, you can easily figure out that they don't really have well differentiated structure. It is surely higher uh, in terms of complexity with respect to thallophytes because these thallophytes, they are very simpler in structure. Bryophytes are little complex and that is when they look like root-like, stem-like or leaf-like respective structures. So bryophytes, they are terrestrial plant. Again, another difference, the thallophytes, they were aquatic ones. Bryophytes, these are terrestrial plants, uh, and but known as the amphibians of the plant kingdom because they require water for sexual reproduction process. One minute, people. So, uh, this, yeah, so these bryophytes, though they are terrestrial plants, they are also called as amphibians of the plant kingdom because they require. Uh, water for the sexual reproduction. Again, the same process like we had seen uh, one of the hydrophily uh, type of pollination, right? Something of that sort has to happen with these bryophyte uh, type of category. And that's why they require water for their uh, sexual reproduction. And that's when they are called as amphibian. They don't really uh, live in the water uh, or survive in the water but they do require water for the, one of the important process of reproduction. They are present in moist and shady places. Again, um, it's because they don't have very well differentiated structures, so obviously their requirements are a little less in terms of the complexity. So they just need a little bit of moist and shady places so that they can grow. Bryophyta, this majorly includes mosses, hornworts, and liverworts. Uh, so let me show you these pictures as well. Again, mosses, uh, you would know by and large, uh, but still we will go and have a look at these pictures, mosses, specifically, uh, these ones, yeah. These ones, these are the mosses that you commonly know of, yeah. Uh, then, Lever words. You can see these are the. This is the typical example of this lever word type of plant. Uh, yeah, these ones, which uh, you can see, they grow on especially walls where when the walls are too wet or they are too moist or their moisture content is too high. So that's something like lever words. And the third one, which was it? Uh, what did I miss? Onwards, yeah. H O ah. no. This one, yeah. Something like this. Again, these ones, they are uh, very typical examples. Uh, 
so structurally they would look very similar but because we are not looking at the detailed uh, structures uh, we might not find much differences but obviously there are quite a few differences even between uh, these two three categories that we have just seen as an example yeah but as of now what you again need to remember is these are the three examples of bryophytes rather these are sub categories of the uh, bryophytes but again they can also become an example the actual examples are these names so marchantia uh, funaria sphagnum and anthocyrus so these are the names but again if you can remember that's good enough uh, if not you can just remember these three uh, mosses hornworts and liverworts that's good enough. so that is the whole category of bryophyte so again uh, just quick revision from thallophyte they have not much differentiated structures so that's why they are thallus like then a little higher category in terms of organization is the plants which has root like stem like or leaf like structure that is bryophytes yes yajnesh someone has raised hand yeah sir so yes. moss is a bryophyte yeah Okay, any any other questions in bryophyte? <clears throat> okay, then the next category, so uh, again, uh, you are not supposed to remember quite a lot of characteristics, but the major distinguishing characters between these categories, you should know of, plus with one or two example that is expected. So that is when even if you see quite a lot of description, you can sometimes just ignore that and remember the main main points because that will be easier. And also uh, the purpose of doing whole of this chapter is not to understand what is bryophyte and what is pteridophyte. Let's say you go and look at some plant based on the knowledge that you have, like you know the characteristic of thallophytes, bryophytes and so on based on whatever knowledge you have, you should be able to roughly categorize these plants, right? So that is the main purpose. Don't think it only academic, you can also think of a little outside. So this third category within the kingdom plant is pteridophytes. They have a well-differentiated plant body into root, stem and leaves. Now again, think in terms of complexity, thallus, root-like, stem-like, and leaf like to a well differentiated structure of the plant body that is root, stem, and leaves. So, again, the complexity is increasing or the structural organization has increased to a great extent. They also have a vascular system for conduction of water, other substances, and some common examples are Selaginella, Equisetum, and Teres. But you can simply write this fence, right? So that is the uh, example of this pteridophyte uh, category. Uh, I guess, yeah. Uh, let me show you a few more examples so that you can easily see this clearly. So, fights. See, uh, I'm sure you would have seen these plants very commonly. It's present almost everywhere. Uh, is it corn? Yeah, it is, it is. All of these are. The speciality of these ferns, I want to show these spores actually. So they are one of the oldest plants, right? On Earth. Correct. So, um, not sure where it will be. Let me just type spores. Uh, yeah, so you must have seen these kind of structures on the leaf, right? Especially like this, right? These are the spores on this fern plant and that is how they reproduce as well, right? So again, we need not go into the reproduction process, what exactly happened and so on. But these are the reproductive structure on this fern plant. Uh, and that is why the, these are like in terms of complexity, these are at the center or at the middle, like compared to the higher plants and compared to the uh, thallophytes, that's where they stand at the center. So 
this earlier uh, like when probably the evolution would have happened that's when this uh, pteridophytes category they would have evolved from uh, this uh, earlier category that is bryophytes so that is from non vascular to vascular from non uh, sexually reproducing or non spore forming to spore forming and then it went to flowering and non flowering plants so that way the again in terms of complexity these are uh, different yes yes nish so the things on the leaf are they like part of the leaf or they are parasites kind of thing? no these are the part of the leaf these are like spores spores in the sense like if you see this no so if you see this diagram you can see that these tiny uh, like you know anthers right anthers are very much part of the flower this is something like these spores or they are also called as sporangia uh, sporangia is the sac which holds the spore uh, at one place so that is what uh, these structures are. so these are the sporangia that means the sacs which are holding the spores and these spores are responsible for generation of the uh, next uh, like life cycle of the plant like so, a mushroom uh not even a mushroom has mushroom like also that. has spores correct something similar okay so that is pteridophytes uh does anyone else have any question i hope you are following the description and the examples and also you are understanding this a bit by bit good morning mangal yeah shall i ask you a question <laughs> okay then the next or the fourth category within kingdom plant is gymnosperm now gymnosperms again these are well differentiated with vascular tissues and the next additional character characteristic that comes with gymnosperm is the presence of the seed but these seeds they are not enclosed in a fruit rather they are called as naked seed because they are not enclosed within the fruit like how it was in the case of angiosperms or the regular flowering plants right so these are non uh, sorry naked seeds that means they are not enclosed within uh, any fruit structure so these are just uh, like after the fertilization these seeds they start growing without any fruit wall and so and again some of the common examples is this cycas uh, pinus or ephedra uh, again this is what you commonly see especially this one the second picture is very commonly seen around so let me show you the cycas this is surely like uh, present at most of the uh, institutes uh, because it's like kind of round and very fancy ornamental plant this one right you surely would have seen this plant that is nothing but the cycas uh, then uh, ephedra uh, which one would be yeah these ones right uh, these ones you would have surely seen again because these are commonly found uh, majorly within the grasslands right uh, grasslands in the sense like if you uh, even like next to python hill you will find quite a few of uh, these plants so that's the ephedra and then one more which one i missed the pinus pinus is again uh commonly observed around us so pinus yeah these ones right uh, commonly observed ones are these ones that you see uh or even one more was there this one yeah which is like more conical so again there are different sub types of sub categories uh, this one is also commonly seen so these are the different types of pinus or uh, what we say gymnospermic plants so again what you need to remember in terms of these are uh, like seed or fruit uh, sorry flower bearing plants and 
they have naked seed that is the one of the most important characteristics again in terms of general characteristic they will have, of course have well differentiated uh, plant structure that is leaf root stem and so on and they will also have vascular tissues so again uh, i assume that this part is clear but if anyone else has any question please feel free to ask i have tried to reduce the description as to the less extent as possible so that you can remember only the main characteristic and then the last uh, category within the kingdom plantae that is angiosperm angiosperm you know quite a lot of information already from the flower structures so these are seed bearing vascular plants very well differentiated body they bear fruits as well as flowers and uh, like of, of course these examples which is mentioned here that wolfia which is the smallest major in flower up to almost point Uh, sorry, the plant uh, up to point one centimeter to the eucalyptus tree, which is around even hundred meter uh, tall. So that can vary depending on whatever structures or whatever uh, sizes they are of. Uh, this again we had seen in terms of the angiosperms. They are divided into monocot and dicot type of plant. Monocot they have specific uh, characteristics. Dicot they have specific characteristics. in terms of the cotyledons which are present in the seed so that way uh, this can be differentiated of course they have different uh, xylem and phloem arrangement uh, then the leaf styles are different or the root arrangements are different in both of this uh, i assume that you would have studied uh, earlier or i guess even we did it monocot and dicot yeah but yeah you would know this these are again the simpler one so and the common examples you write the name of any flowering plant mango rose tomato and so on so these are the angiosperm plant and with this i guess that's it for kingdom plant okay does anyone have any question here sun sun plant No, it's angiosperm. It's a proper flower. No. But it goes via so bud stage. The fruit itself is the sunflower. So then, that way, the strawberry will also be angiosperm. Because the seeds are exposed. No, but the sunflower is a flower. That's when we last time when we saw those side petals, the ray florets of sunflower. These were the individual flowers. Okay, people. I hope you are not sleeping. Shaurya, Uday, Rishab, you want to say hi to Rishab once more? Hi, Rishab. Yes, Prakash. Hi. Sir, <laughs> so why aren't algae included in like kingdom plant? Why aren't? Why they, are algae not they included? Are, they are no. Sorry. No. What is this? But then you mean? I just read somewhere that they aren't. Someone don't. I mean, I read it that they don't. They lack the stomata and something that requires the plant to grow. So oh, that way, that is when we said no. They don't have a completely undifferentiated or well differentiated plant structures, but they are very much part of kingdom plant. Okay. There are some algae which we call as uh, blue green algae. They are part of the uh, the uh, protista category, but that's a different algae altogether. These are unicellular ones. Okay.
and also they have this uh, photosynthetic pigment and so on and because they are unicellular eukaryotic that was put into protista category and these are like most primitive ones and then the later what they would have evolved uh, as per the complexity i would imagine is they would have grown into thallophyta which is part of kingdom plantae so so okay so then so that was all about kingdom plantae which has five uh, sub categories or you can say five phylums uh, that is thallophyta bryophyta then pteridophyta gymnosperm and angiosperm five of them now the next kingdom again after monera protista uh, uh, fungi and then plantae the last kingdom the fifth kingdom which is more complex is kingdom animalia and it also uh, like one of the largest kingdom in terms of number of organisms they are included in this right uh, like in terms of species uh, of course plant have largest or the plant kingdom has largest number of individuals but animal kingdom has largest number of species so animals again multicellular eukaryotic they do not possess chlorophyll or cell wall and so on again the difference of the plant cell and animal cell you can write quite a few characteristics uh, from the animal cell here they exhibit heterotrophic mode of nutrition because obviously we are always dependent uh, for the food on some other species uh, once someone had also asked me that we cook our own food so don't we think uh, like we are also autotrophic but that food whatever we cook is also dependent on some other uh, like plants or animal species right so that way uh, it is still a heterotrophic mode of nutrition uh, and this whole of this kingdom animalia is divided into nine different sub phyla so that is nine different categories within kingdom animal these names again they are little complicated uh, but when we look at these structures this will be much easier and half of them uh you would already know of so these are uh, nine porifera silentera uh, or it is also called as nidaria plati helminthis nematoda anelida orthopoda mollusca echinodermata and chordata we fall in this category of chordata which is like a presence of notochord and so on so we will see one by one uh, each of this category again uh and again i have kept a description to uh, shortest so that we will be able to differentiate here we will have more uh, relatable things because we have seen quite a lot of them very commonly around us uh, except the porifera and snidaria i guess but rest of the things you would know uh, and i guess uh, video okay let me play a video that will also act as a break for you people Uh, how long is it just 41 seconds kingdom animalia it includes heterotrophic multicellular eukaryotes called animals cell wall is absent depend on plants directly or indirectly for food stores food reserves as fat or glycogen the mode of nutrition is holozoic these are capable of locomotion reproduction is sexual further details can be studied in the coming chapters <laughs> scam no wow. sorry that was a short introduction to kingdom animal right okay so okay yeah now this has to go to full screen there is one more video do so there is then phylum the first category within the kingdom animalia that is phylum porifera uh, again these are commonly known as sponges and porifera literally translates to the organisms with holes or with pores on their body uh, again uh, we have a concept of when we call something as an animal we call them so 
uh, if they have legs and if they have eyes and so on right but that is our understanding of calling something as an animal in general when we look at the whole of the animal kingdom we differentiate them based on the presence of the cell membrane and the eukaryotic cell like structure and the characteristics of uh, the animal category so that's what this uh, defines this kingdom animalia and this porifera which has or which includes sponges is one example of such things the features of this kingdom uh, sorry not the kingdom phylum porifera is they are non motile again sorry non motile like unlike animals most of the animals they are motile but in this specific case these are the non motile ones right and then these are multicellular organism of course because again in terms of complexity we are going from unicellular to multicellular and they have a hard outer skeleton again this is one of the most uh, primitive species because these will be found in the deep aquatic uh, like water bodies they have porous body because that's what is the main characteristic of these sponges uh the pores on the bodies they create a kind of canal system which helps in the circulation of the substances a uh, circulation of the substances as in whatever they eat or whatever they uh, generate in terms of metabolism that is what will be transported through these pores which acts as a canal system not differentiated into head and tail again like i said our description of calling something an animal has to have head has to have legs or hands or whatever or limbs right these sponges they are not differentiated into the head and tail part and also do not have very well developed organ system again why because they are a uh, very primitive species and they are included in the uh, marine habitat so that means like all of these are uh, water uh, animals and the examples is the spongilia or uh, sicor uh these are the two examples uh which is commonly seen as sponges yes prakriti so since they have so many characteristics like uh, contradicting the characteristics of animals why don't these just fall into some other category like maybe kingdom uh, planty only maybe but then planty has to have chlorophyll this don't have chlorophyll yeah so is there some other category with these are not uh, they don't contain uh, like what chitin as the cell wall cover so not fungi they are not unicellular so not protista and monad so obviously they fall into the category which is a uh, kingdom animalia and that's when within the kingdom they have been sub classified further and then those uh, phylums are also sub classified further based on the differences in the characteristics uh i guess we will watch this quick video uh, i'm not sure how many minutes but uh, i assume that you have clarity of what this porifera uh, phylum animals are it is divided into three classes class 1 uh you are not supposed to remember this this is just for your uh, further information this category just take out the basics that you have from this video i found this video very informative that's why they are included here and there is actually a series of these videos you can see they are coming down as suggestion so you can also watch it out later calcaria class 2 hexactinellida class 3 demospongy class 1 calcaria the calcaria sponges present in marine shallow waters calcaria spicula present they are monoxin traxin or tetraxin so uh, this bird like thing that is being shown that is what is calcaria right and monaxon traxon tetraxon depending on how many branch like things are there that is what they are being uh, classified axon or tetraxon 
coeloblastular larva or amphiblastular larva. Examples, Clathrina cypha, Leucoselena. Last two, exact. And, and if it is getting complicated, you tell me, I'll stop that, okay? Okay? Another that. These are glass sponges present in marine waters. Spicules are siliceous and hexactinal. Trichomella larva is present. Examples, Euplectella, Venus flower basket, Halonima, glass rope sponge. Class three, Demospongy. It is Demospongies. These are marine or brackish or freshwater sponges. Siliceous spicules or spongin fibers for both. Parenchymella larva. Examples Spongia or Euspongy, both spongy. Cleona, bowling sponge. Spongilla, freshwater sponge. Shalina. So uh, again, these names, you would see they are very interesting ones. Bath sponge, it was name given later because it look li literally looks like a sponge that we use sometimes for bath. Uh, boring sponge, I don't know why it was given such name. Uh, freshwater sponge because it was found in freshwater as well, apart from the sea water. And this uh, Kalina, that is dead man's fingers. It actually looks like someone who is dead and rotted for years. And that's what it looks like. So that is when this dead man. So these are just different examples. You can remember any of these uh, as a common example of this phylum uh, porifera. Okay, so uh, that is the uh, phylum porifera, which is first category within the kingdom animal. Does anyone have any question here? Okay. Shall we do this first and finish it? And we will stop after this category because, yeah. So, next one is phylum silenterata, right? Uh, it's also called as Snidaria. Snidaria. Uh, some people call it Nidaria, that's also fine, but uh, what I have been taught is to call it Snidaria. Uh, again, can be wrong or can be right, I'm not sure of it. But Silenterata is the common name that we know. Yes, Prakriti? Sir, and phylum uh, Porifera. Do they not reproduce because there was nothing given about that? No, they do reproduce, of course. So there are different modes of reproduction, but we are not talking about it. As well. Yeah. If you want to know, uh, I guess in your textbook that information is given to some extent. Somewhere. I happen to remember something written. But... I guess like that is not expected of you people to remember all of it. No, it's not there. But so usually they also reproduce uh, from the uh, what we call as four like bodies. Yeah, that's how they these most of these organism uh, they reproduce. They have special structures uh, developed as the reproductive structures, but unlike uh, the higher categories of the animals. So these are not that complex at the end. But they do reproduce all of them. Also, that is one of the uh, like characteristics to separate them from the other categories of the kingdoms. Okay, so the term silenteratis is derived from the Greek word, which means kilos, uh, and which ultimately means hollow belly hollow bellied that means inside they are like hollow organism 
so they have a hollow body cavity the body is differentiated into two ends all of these uh, cylinder at a category they will always have distinct uh, two sides uh, what we commonly can call is as like a head portion and the tail portion as well uh, but that's not always head is not like a head as such it's just the top part of the uh, body and the body is made up of two layers that is inner and outer lining uh, because the these outer ones and inner ones they have different function in term one will be in terms of protection and the inner one in terms of certain functions within their body they usually live in colonies for example corals that you know of as well as the solitary that is the sea animal the examples uh, is the hydra which is this last figure uh, again hydra is very commonly observed in most of the water bodies jellyfish very well known uh, i am assuming all of you would know jellyfish what is it sea animals these are the sea animals again you can see in all these three they have a head like portion right which is with tentacles it is called as these outgrowths of these structures or of these animals it is called as tentacles tentacles means uh, something that is a hair like growth pro projection so that is uh, this and the corals of course you know this is also a type uh, or example within the cylindrata phylum so that is the phylum cylindrata uh, any question here here what you need to remember is the presence of hollow cavity within the body right then the most important presence of separation of the body into two different parts or two different ends that is head and tail like and then they are the uh, there are the examples of hydra jellyfish sea animals or corals patients everyone is so silent so i bored you to the core today fine i guess let's stop here uh, we are well before the time uh, we tomorrow we will finish whole of these categories uh, so that uh, like there are quite a few of them and again a small description but later on i assume that it will become more and more interesting because that's what we would have seen around us uh let's take a break